Welcome to this radio video and this is a first in a series that I will be doing on the Soft 66 RTL SDR, the software defined radio. Now this is a very inexpensive software defined radio and if you tweak it right for the price you'll get pretty surprising results. Now this is a radio that is controlled by a computer. And you know, a lot of people tell me, well, this isn't shortwave radio. Uh, well, it's a radio. This is a radio. It receives signals from an antenna. And it's just that instead of having all the controls on a faceplate that you tweak with buttons, the controls are on a computer screen. Now, the nature of an SDR makes it a little more uh, difficult to use sometimes, especially these that are very cheap, because these don't have shielding basically so what happens is when you plug this to the computer uh, first of all you gotta be careful computer noise computer generated noise is one of the problems um, and also tweaking of this device is very important uh, the reason I'm gonna do a series also is because a lot of you that have soft 66 um, did not really have good results and it is a little complex. I must say that I've played with this a lot, but I've learned from playing with it a lot of little things that you need not to do or to do in order to have it working right. So the first thing that I will talk about is, first of all, the RF gain button. This RF gain button here. This button, this is actually a potential meter that you just turn left and right to increase or decrease the RF gain or the sensitivity of the receiver. This has to be well placed. If you put this max because you want to have the maximum sensitivity, you won't hear crap with this thing. You cannot put this RF gain to maximum. It will overload the receiver. That's one of the things you need to know. People tend to put this too high and you know what, I've got good results when I typically put it about 50 or 60 percent, nothing more than that. More than 60 percent, I get more noise than anything else. And um, you know, even if it's a little lower, 40 percent, uh, well, signals will be a little weaker, but at least you won't have extra noise. And that's the big problem with this, is extra noise that you don't want. Second thing that I want to talk about on this is you've got two antenna connectors, VHF and UHF connectors. Well, one of the other things that I've noticed with this is that when I plug in both antennas at the same time, I get bad HF reception. I get FM radios stations breaking through the band at places. So I've learned that to have this working at its best, one antenna at a time, not both connected. So when I want to listen to HF, I disconnect the VHF. And it really does a big difference in reception conditions. It really lowers the noise that I get on the receiver. So make sure that you understand that the HF antenna is the one directly on that big circuit board at the bottom and that you don't, you know, do other way around. Don't plug a VHF input if you're trying to listen to HF. It won't work. So remember that the one that has that little white wire here that goes to the top is VHF UHF. HF is at the bottom. So, what we've learned, not too high RF, RF gain, disconnect VHF when you're using HF. I've seen a big difference just by doing that. Make sure that your switch is correctly selected. You want to have a green LED here, a green LED for HF. If it's red, you're on the wrong band. You won't receive anything. So the green LED shows that you're on HF. Now, you've done that uh, what else? Get yourself a good mini USB cable. Take a good length of it. And, um, you know, I've 
played a, little, a, a lot with that. Um, I've noticed that it does help somewhat if I uh, put the USB cable um, five or six turns around a torrid core. It does lower the noise from the computer. And try different computers if you have more than one. You'll see some computers generate more noise than others. So these are things that you have to check for. Make sure that the antennas that you plug are shielded cables. So when you plug that SMA connector there, right here at the bottom, I think it's SMA, um, make sure the cable that goes from that connector to the antenna is shielded. You want to have it shielded all the way up to the antenna outside. That's the only way it's going to work well to lower the amount of noise you get on this device. So these are all the tips and tricks that I can tell you about the device itself. Another thing that you can add to it is maybe put it inside a metal box, shield it even more. Personally, I've tried with a box, without a box, I haven't seen much difference. There might have been a little bit of differences, yes. So by shielding it, of course, you are increasing your chance you know, of uh, lowering the noise level from the device. Keep in mind this is a very sensitive device. Uh, it's pretty amazing. But you got to be careful on how to tweak it. So this is the tweak part. This is what I did on the circuit board part. The next videos I'll post is the tweaking on the computer itself. Uh, we'll check the tweaking on HD SDR that I use mostly for it, but also for SDR Sharp, if you're using SDR Sharp. So remember the basics, good USB cable, key, uh, cable plugged in here, correct setup so that green LED for HF, RF gain, not at maximum. If you do that, you'll, that's not going to work well. No more than 50-60%. Uh, shielded cables at the connectors and if you're listening to HF, disconnect the VHF. It does create noise. It, it also, here in Montreal where I am, stations, FM stations are strong. It creates FM station breakout on the HF band if I leave the VHF antenna on. So, start with that. Start with these recommendations and check out what it does on your computer for reception. But I bet you that slowly you will get a working RTL that's going to be much more interesting. Next series of videos will be on the tweaking part of the software, what I did on HDSDR and on SDR Sharp in order to get good reception for HF. Now, one last little bit of detail. I have noticed that this um, device is good on shortwave uh, up to about 15 megahertz. It has some kind of uh, slump there at 15, 16, 17 megahertz. There's some kind of, uh, um, of you know, level where it seems not to be very sensitive. And then it comes back when you go back above 20 megahertz it seems to get back to a more sensitive device so it seems to be a little bit unequal in its performance on the shortwave bands so uh, this is the first video hope you enjoy it if you do please subscribe to our channel you'll be informed when new videos are online if you have any comments questions problems please ask and we'll try to help you and uh, hopefully with the series that i'll be posting you'll be uh, enjoying a much better experience with your Soft 66 uh, device on your radio listening hobby.